Okay, I'd like to call to order the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for Lakeville, Massachusetts is meeting Thursday, August 19th, 2021. It is 7 p.m. And in accordance with the provisions allowed by Chapter 20 Acts of 2021, the August 19th, 2021 public meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals will be held remotely. However, to view this meeting in progress, please go to the Facebook dot com backslash late cam to view it um you do not need a facebook account in order to do this the meeting will be recorded and available to and available to be viewed at a later date so we have one hearing tonight and as i scroll down <clears throat> the lakeville zoning board of appeals acting in accordance with Mass General Laws Chapter 40A as amended will conduct a public hearing on Thursday, August 19th, 2021 at 7 p.m. to hear the petition of Nature's Remedy of Massachusetts Incorporated and Jushi Mass Incorporated. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Nature's Remedy has a planning board issued permit for a tier four adult use marijuana cultivator and product manufacturing establishment and a zoning board of appeals issued special permit for the use and operation of a registered marijuana dispensary within the same space, Nature's Remedy is merging with Jushi Massachusetts Inc. and seeks approval for Jushi to be the holder of the special permits under 7.4.6 as provided by the Lakeville bylaws. The property site is 310 Kenneth W. Welch Drive and is owned by CSSI LLC. Um, and again, this is a remote meeting that uh, meets all of the governor's ordinances that were issued as of June 16th. So um, I guess at this point, why don't I, I'm assuming, is Mr. Carr here representing the applicant? Or yes, Mr. Chairman, who, who's, who's, let me ask you this: Who's presenting on behalf of the applicant? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, this is Josh Lee Smith. I think I'll, I'll be opening up, and then I do have other uh, members of Nature's Remedies team, as well as Jushi, uh, who may be um, addressing any questions that the board may have. Okay, why don't I ask you to let us know what you're doing at this point, um, and then we'll we'll go from there. Sure. So um, first, can folks hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so again, for the record, my name is uh, Joshua Lee Smith. I'm uh, outside counsel for Nature's Remedy. Uh, as you had mentioned, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Nature's Remedy is seeking a couple of uh, sort of two big bucket items. The first bucket pertains to a uh, request for approval by this board to transfer or assign the right title and interest with respect to the uh, special permits that were granted by this board as well as the planning board um, in connection with this facility. Um, that's one item that we're requesting and that was set forth in the, in the petition letter that I had submitted to the, to the ZBA. Um, the other item uh, that we are seeking pertains to a modification with respect to uh, an expansion of the um, facility uh, where the, whereby the, uh, the landlord had previously used or utilized uh, approximately 10,000 square foot area within the existing building uh, for office use. And my client, uh, Nature's Remedy, is looking to utilize that space for office, uh, break room, and as well as a locker room. Um, it's an accessory, it's accessory to the existing marijuana use. Uh, so that's the second uh, request that we have uh, before this board. Uh, if it may be helpful if I can give just a little bit of background with respect to how we got here and procedurally where we've where we've been with respect to other boards in, in the town uh, pertaining to this request. Um, so the the reason for the for the first request with respect to Nature's Remedy and Jushi uh, pertains to the the pending merger, which Mr. Chair I think you had you had mentioned uh, in your remarks. So the parties the two parties are uh, in the process of um, going through a merger. They have yet to complete the merger. Uh, there are some state level as well as local level approvals that need to be obtained in order for the merger to be completed. In addition to everything else that goes into the completion of a, a two corporate entities merging with one another. As a result of the merger, 
uh, assuming that it that it happens, which we have high confidence that it will, uh, the surviving entity will be Jushi Ma Inc. Uh, and Mr. Chair, you did you did uh, pronounce Jushi correctly. You're probably one of the first among all of these local boards who've actually uh, pronounced it correctly on the first on the first try. So Jushi will be the surviving entity once the merger happens. Um, the state level approvals are will come from the, or have come from the Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commission. The uh, application that was submitted to the CCC was a change of ownership and control. That was approved about a week ago. So a major milestone with respect to the, the parties and their, their quest to uh, close on this merger has been met with respect to the state level approvals. We have been meeting with various towns, other communities, in connection with Nature's Remedies, other holdings, other establishments that it has in the Commonwealth, uh, including places like Ting Tingsboro and um, uh, Millbury and Grafton in connection with other establishments, because we have to go through the same process with respect to meeting with the boards of selectmen, meet, uh, select boards, meeting with, uh, in certain circumstances, the planning boards and or ZBAs to do what we're requesting here in Lakeville to do, which is to transfer uh, the rights with respect to what Nature's Remedy is holding today to Jushi, uh, cont again, contingent upon the closing of the merger. So that, that's the reason for the, the first major request in terms of uh, seeking from this board a request uh, for your approval to grant uh, that um, uh, the approval with respect to the closing of the merger that all of the special permits that were granted in connection with this facility in Lakeville uh, be, be um, transferred to Jushi. Uh, the, the second item, as I had mentioned, pertains to a, um, a modification to the uh, special permit based on the expanded 10,000 square foot area. Procedurally, we've, we've met with, I'll, I'll start with the planning board. We met with the planning board last week with the Lakeville planning board. Uh, the reason for the meeting with the Lakeville Planning Board is, is solely due to this 10,000 square foot area. And I do want to underscore that the, this 10,000 square foot area uh, is not an expansion of the building footprint at all. Uh, it is an existing, the, the footprint of the building does not change whatsoever. Uh, it, it was an, it, it, in fact, it was an existing space that was used for office purposes, as I said, by the previous, by the landlord. Um, and so we met with the, with the, uh, planning board, with your planning board, with your fellow members there, and they uh, unanimously approved the site plan subject to whatever uh, potential conditions or changes uh, may come from this meeting, meeting with the ZBA. Um, so we've, we've met with them. And, and in addition to that, they had some uh, relatively minor, minor input with respect to uh, some things that they wanted added to the plan. Uh, and I, I uh, on this call as well as uh, uh, Bob Forbes, uh, who is a civil engineer uh, and um, his colleague uh, who have updated the plan accordingly. Uh, we submitted the updates uh, to the plan to Kathy Murray. And so uh, we have, if I were there, I would display it to you in person, but we, we did submit the uh, updated plan to the board in accordance with uh, exactly what the planning board had requested, which were all uh, reasonable uh, additions. And so we, we've done that. Um, and then just closing the loop with respect to the procedural uh, aspects, we procedural history prior to the planning board, we, we met with your board of select or your select board. Uh, so working with uh, RE Sky and um, town council, uh, we worked on um, having the HCA. So there are two HCAs, one with respect to the adult use marijuana and one with respect to the medical uh, use uh, marijuana component of this facility. And so those two, those two HCAs were uh, assigned, transferred again, subject to the closing of the merger and the uh, effective, effectiveness of, that, of the merger happening. Um, and the board was, the, the, your select board was completely and unanimously in, in, in a, uh, aligned with respect to that approval. And so those are sort of the steps working backwards, met first with the board, with the select board and then with your planning board. And, and lastly, we are here tonight uh, before you seeking um, the relief that I had, I had noted. Uh, as I said, we do, have, um, we do have Bob Forbes here. Bob, are you, are you uh, online? 
Yes, I see yes, I am. Um, so at this time, perhaps Bob, you could, if you could just talk very briefly about uh, the updates that you made with respect to the, the site plan. I'd be happy to do that. Uh, Mr. Chairman and, and members of the board, uh, my name is Bob Forbes, as Josh stated from Zenith Consulting Engineers in town. And um, if I could ask if I could share my screen, it might be easier for everybody to get a look at uh, what the plan is and get an idea of what the site looks like if you need to be re-familiarized with it or I'm familiar with it. Yeah, Bob, that'd be great. You could do that. Okay, I'm hoping, can everybody see that? Yes, thanks, Bob. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so the uh, the site is on Kenneth Welch Drive, 310 Kenneth Welch Drive. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit so people can see it a little bit better. Um, so there's an entrance off Kenneth Welch here. Um, and approximately one quarter of the building is being utilized by Nature's Remedy. And if you can see my highlighter, I'm highlighting that area here. And as Josh had stated, that that um, area, that 10,000 square foot area of office and break rooms and locker rooms um, that was not uh, being utilized by Nature's Remedy, but is planned to be utilized in the future, is this hatched area in the front corner of the building here. So um, as far as one of the issues that was discussed with the planning board was the parking situation. And I'd just like to, <clears throat> excuse me, go over that. Um, in, on the original approval for this project, which was in 2020, um, the, 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 the site was approved with 67 total spaces for Nature's Remedy, designated just for their sole use. Um, the, the, one of the components of that was for uh, a dispensary. And there were 20, uni 20 parking spaces designated for the dispensary use. Now in this project, the, there is no dispensary proposed. So, um, that, the, so that's essentially the retail aspect of the project and it's not gonna be included. In fact, it was a condition of the planning board's approval that the first condition is a special permit will not allow a dispensary. So um, we have, like I stated, there was 67 spaces um, approved last year initially, and there, there are 68 actually designated now for the use of Jushi. Um, and I, I can quickly go over that. There are eight here in the back of the property uh, there are 26 on the side of the property, another two near where the existing dumpster is, and uh, six right at the entrance. Now there are some, there are some, oh, and seven right in front of the building. Uh, there are some temporary gravel parking spaces uh, where I'm highlighting here, and that was, uh, the, the asphalt had to be torn up in this area to install uh, a new septic system. And that will all be repaired and brought back to its original state. But we do show those, ex those temporary parking spaces here. Those are not gonna remain. And it does not affect the count of the total parking spaces. Now there was a circ the circular parking area that I'm highlighting here um, that has 19 existing spaces. Um, the lines were not, all the other lines on the, on the project were surveyed. The lines did not exist when the survey was done, but I was out at the site yesterday and they do exist now. So uh, this, this site is paved with asphalt and painted lines with a couple of handicapped parking spaces in this area and a total of 19. So the total number of spaces um, that we have for for the use of this project is 68. So it's one more than what was um, initially uh, approved last year. And again, there's no commercial component to the project. So uh, some a couple of the other items, the, the fire chief did chime in on this, rightfully so. 
and he drove his vehicle. There's a there's a gravel fire access in the back of the building, and he did drive his vehicle on there to make sure that it was adequate, and he he did was able to do that, uh, and had some um, conditions that he would like to see, and those are referenced in the planning board approval as well. Um, he wanted them. He wanted it to be shown on the plan, which we've we've shown here and designated as fire access. Uh, he wanted, uh, oh, the planning, he wanted there to, it to be maintained. So the trees, there's a tree line right, right off the set off of the building. You can see that here. That's a survey tree line there. And he just wanted those trees to be trimmed back on a regular basis and the gravel driveway to ma be maintained as it is in the condition that it is now. So it can, he can continue to travel there if need be. Um, and a couple more uh, conditions of the planning board uh, approval were that the all of the spaces that are to be used by Nature's Remedy in Jushi um, were to be, excuse me, were to be painted as such. So they'll all receive some paint on the asphalt, designating them at for Jushi use only. Um, and then also the fire chief wanted the access doors, the access and egress doors um, painted with sign, well, signage put on them to, for emergency use so they know how to get into um, the Nature's Remedies operation if, if, if the call goes to him. And I think that's pretty much it. Sorry, not fast enough on the uh, mute, unmute button. So uh, just one one minor correction I did want to make is um, the, th this was approved first uh, back in 2018 and then subsequently in 2019 between the two boards, between the planning board and the uh, and the ZBA. And right. I, I will point out, but I'm sure the, the members know uh, very well that the, that the planning board at the time, we, we had uh, the first approval with respect to the special permit uh, back in 2019 by the planning board, because at the time uh, the zoning bylaw uh, gave the planning board that permit granting authority. And then there was a subsequent amendment uh, to the bylaw and the zoning map, which gave this board uh, all right and authority with respect to, uh, I think everything marijuana, including adult use and medical. Um, so the planning board no longer the permit granting authority. Uh, in that in that manner. So, uh, with that, uh, I guess I'll open it up to any questions that the uh, that the members may have. Uh, thanks, Josh. Why don't we do this first, though? What I would what I would like to do is we do have some correspondence from some different departments, and I apologize. Some of this may be a little bit repetitive, and uh, Josh and Bob may have actually already answered or referenced some of this, but. Uh, just to make sure I don't miss anything, I am going to read into the record a couple of um, memos that we have from different departments in town. We did receive a memo on August 10th uh, addressed to the uh, planning board as well as the zoning board from the Board of Selectmen. Board of Selectmen viewed the site plan amendment for Nature's Remedy, Jushi facility located at 310 Kenneth Wells Drive during its August 9th meeting. Board asked staff to convey to the Planning and Zoning Board of Appeals that the modification could have implications on parking capacity, given that the address is host to several businesses, not all of which are fully occupied. The board believes that a full analysis of the parking, uh, the facility's parking plan should be required as part of the project analysis. Thank you for your consideration. Uh, again, I believe that we have addressed that, or I shouldn't say we, but the petitioner has addressed that at this point. Um, in addition, we also received a memo from the planning board uh, dated August 17th after I believe the last meeting you guys had with them. At their Thursday, August 12th meeting, the planning board reviewed the petition, ref uh, the above reference petition for hearing from the planning, from the board of appeal, excuse me, reference petition for hearing from the board of appeals. The board recommends the following special permit will not allow a dispensary. Um, which I believe you have confirmed that is not the case. Uh, fire access lane is to be shown in the plan, which Bob did reference. A uh, copy of the amended site plan will be referenced in the special permit, which we did just review. 
there will be signage or paint that will indicate parking spaces shown on the site plan that are designated for nature's remedy. Um, and I'm gonna add, even though it's not in the memo, but nature's remedy and Jushi, um, nature's remedy egress access doors will be marked with signage for emergency response. I did have a conversation with uh, Chief O'Brien earlier today and um, he did confirm from at least the fire department standpoint that that's what they are looking for. Um, so before I, I just so I don't uh, forget, I guess I'm gonna reference Bob. Bob, at this point, that fire access lane has been cleared and is accessible now to the fire apparatus that needs to get down there. I think you, you referenced that, a, that the fire chief did drive a vehicle down there. Was that today or recently, or is it still in the process? My understanding is that he drove it uh, within the past few days because I was out there yesterday and you could still see his tire tracks out there on the grass. It's a, it's a gravel area that's been, that grass is uh, overgrown, but it's maintained, it's mowed. Um, so I think what my understanding is what the chief was asking for was that it be, it be kept uh, in the condition that it is now. Uh, so, in other words, he doesn't want those trees growing in closer to the building and not having the, the same width of access lane back there. And he doesn't want the grass to be growing up and him not be able to drive over it. Just be maintained exactly as it is now. That was my understanding. Yeah, my, my, again, talking to him earlier today, I, my, my understanding is that it's, a, it's kind of a tight area back there. Yes wetlands and conservation and whatnot. So um, they need to keep up with making sure it's accessible uh, for the safety reasons. So I'm assuming there's there would there would be no issue if we would have conditioned the special permit to make sure that it is accessible to the chief's um, liking and that it is kept open and accessible um, at all times. We'd be amenable to that condition, Mr. Chair. And, okay. and in fact, um, Bob was yeah, diligent enough to include on the plan, on the latest iteration of the plan, a notation to that effect. Okay. Um, in reference, I guess, to what I was just talking about to some degree, we also do have a memo uh, to read into the record from August 13th. Actually, it's a letter um, to the planning board, which was submitted to the zoning board as well. Again, just to keep everything clean here. Uh, from the fire chief, this letter has been written to communicate the concerns of the Lake of Fire Department in regards to the response accessibility to the building located at 310 Kenneth Welch Drive. This letter is in response to Nature's Remedy site plan uh, plan review, although the application is specific to Nature's Remedy portion of the building, the activities of 110 and affect the accessibility of the entire building, current condition of the building, vehicle parking, areas appear to be congested and not organized, which I believe, Bob, you've referenced. Um, Access is limited and that responders cannot circle the building. Again, has been referenced. Tenant locations are not identified with signage. Uh, I do believe part of the reason that was brought up was I believe it was an, um, an ambulance or an EMT call there at some point in the near in the recent past in which they did have some difficulty figuring out which tenant they needed to to get to, which which fortunately nothing Nothing bad happened because of it, but uh, it did take them a little extra time. So again, they're not just nitpicking for no reason. Um, and there are multiple fire alarm systems in the building that create confusion for responders. Um, I'm not sure if anyone responded to that concern yet or not, but um, if, is anyone able to comment on the multiple fire systems um, issue that the chief brought up? Uh, Bob? Bob? Carr, do you want to respond to that? I know that, well, first of all, let me point out that this August 13th letter um, pre predated the meeting that we had with the planning board. So a lot of this was definitely addressed. And I know that immediately after the planning board meeting, um, we, I know representatives of Nature's Remedy had reached out to the, the landlord, uh, as well as others uh, in the town, including the fire chief, uh, with, in response to this letter, as well as the comments by the planning board. And I believe that this uh, comment with respect to multiple alarm systems was discussed directly with the landlord. Um, but Bob Carr can probably elaborate on that. Yeah, um, thanks, Josh. Yes, um, well, in, in our build out, what we did, um, we have, we took out the existing alarm system and put in, um, you know, the, uh, 
a highly modern, the latest and greatest fire system in our area. So, um, you know, we're, it's not clear to us what's in the other areas, but I do know that the uh, landlord has been working on it because he's been in our section with alarm guys trying to um, get them dialed in so they, they do talk to each other. Where he's ended up with that, I, I, I do not know, but I do know that as far as our alarm system and, and what we've installed is, um, is the latest in technology. So, um, you know, that's all I can speak to, but I do know that he has been working on it because I've seen his alarm people on our side actually working on it. So to that, um, it's as far as I can speak to that, uh, but I do know that an effort is being made and that the, when I spoke to the chief, he had, he did have a, a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with our landlord and the landlord had promised verbally that he would take care of it. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. Uh -huh. We also have a letter from the Conservation Commission dated August 18th, subject Nature's Remedy 310 Kenneth Waltz Drive. The Conservation Commission has reviewed the petition for hearing on the reference site. In general, the commission approves this project as described with the requirement that no construction materials be stored in wetland areas and no work shall be performed in the 100 foot buffer zone. The location of access to the work area and parking must be identified on the site plan. No construction waste may be allowed to enter the wetland area if any changes are required in the proposed work plan. Conservation agent must be notified. I think that takes care of any correspondence um, in regards to this issue. So, um, based on the petitioners, council and engineering, it seems like most of the issues that were brought up at prior meetings um, have been addressed. I do think the fire accessibility and parking issues seem to be the, the biggest um, concerns. And just to clarify in regards to the parking issue, because we talked a little bit about the fire um, department's uh, concerns, there are no the 10,000 square feet of additional space that they will be taking. There are no more additional employees. There will be no dispensary. So there will be no more flow from a, from a person or an individual standpoint to the space, correct? That, that is absolutely correct. Okay. Um, and this, is this is accessory space. And there's, as a result, this is not a, a, an expansion in the nature of um, to accommodate additional employees. This is uh, a, somewhat of a, a reconfiguration of the offices that were in a different location. And as you point out, Mr. Chair, the, the dispensary, th there'll be no dispensing at this facility, but at one point there was a uh, contemplation of there being a, a dispensing component at this facility that's gone away. And so that floor area has now been repurposed for cultivation. Um, and so it, 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 it resulted in moving, shifting some of the office area, some of the locker room area in the uh, existing space into this 10,000 square foot area. Before they were, Nature's Remedy was just simply cramped. Right, okay, no, I do remember the, the, the talk of potentially that happening uh, back when we, when we originally permitted it and, and there was a lot of discussion around the, the potential issues with the parking. So that's that's a good thing from a parking standpoint. Um, and they're actually, correct me if I'm wrong, we have 68 spots now versus the 67 that were origin, originally um, part of the permit that was issued a couple of years ago, correct? That is that's correct. Okay. Um, all right, at this point, what I'm gonna do is open it up to the rest of my board members who may have questions or want clarification on anything. Anyone? Wow, everyone's tired tonight. But I'm not gonna ask anyone to, to, to raise their hand just to take their hand. Although I do see your hand going up. No Amy, counsel, man. I was gonna go to you next anyway. So um, what should we be concerned about or what are we missing? Um, nothing, I actually just have one factual question that I'm confused about. Um, I know that's shocking to you guys. Um, so, so 
I'm confused about the parking because the application says that there's going to be 25 parking spaces that were um, previously designated for other occupants. Those are now going to become part of this. However, I thought the engineer said something about one extra spot. That was a 67 versus 68 that I was referencing. So I so believe I there is one extra spot according to what Bob did. Uh... So one spot is being created. Is that what it is? Um, a, a net a net increase of, of one spot. What, what happened was in the, in the um, original approval, which is, I'll, I'll make reference to, for simplicity, I'll refer to it as the Azor plan. Uh, the, the site civil was different than Bob's firm. Okay. Um, as I said, there was, a, there was a component that was going to be dedicated to dispensing, but that wasn't going to be nature's remedy. Um, the plan that we actually submitted, as, as you may have noticed, was uh, a, the latest plan that we could get our hands on for, that was provided to me by uh, Kathy Murray um, was for Monroe Associates, which was going to be the potential retail dispensary uh, operator. When that went away, all of those spaces that, that were going to be for the retail, i.e. Monroe, now Nature's Remedy is actually picking up those spaces. Okay, so there's 25 spaces from Monroe, and then you're creating one space or no? There, there's been a slight reconfiguration of a, a few spaces here and there since the last approval, but the net the the, the net change is going to be it, it, that it's going to result in a total of sixty eight spaces. So, Josh, I think Amy's point is when you talk about reconfiguring, because of the reconfiguring, we're going to get one more space, or you're going to get one more space. Is that what you're saying, Bob? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. I think that's exactly well, I don't want to put words in Josh's mouth, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in terms of the, the space, the physical spaces that are out there, virtually nothing has changed. There's been a, a there's been a movement of a dumpster, I think, that to accommodate a space or to, uh, that, that caused a slight deviation in the number of spaces. But if you look at the uh, original going back, I think, to 2018, when the, when this was first approved, the spaces are, they're essentially, Nature's Remedy spaces were always on the right side of the building or on the easterly side of the building. That's still the case. Although some of the spaces since that time between Nature's Remedy and the landlord, they've agreed to alloc reallocate some to Nature's Remedy, some to landlord's use or another tenant's use. Uh, so, but, but the general configuration of the spaces all on the easterly side of the building the vast majority of those spaces are still Nature's Remedy spaces. To, today, we will report to you that the most updated count based on Bob's work and field work is 68. So your uh, application says 70. So I, I'll correct that now and say it's 68 based on Bob's uh, field work. And I will also point out that Nature's Remedy does have a, a lease, of course, with the landlord they're guaranteed uh, it, it's 70 spaces. Right now um, on the plan, it, we're indicating 68. So uh, they have the right to have two more if they wanted to bet between the landlord and Nature's Remedy. Uh, but as, insofar as tonight's plan, that the plan that we're looking to have approved, uh, we're, we have 68 spaces that Nature's Remedy is comfortable with uh, having designated and allocated to its use. And beyond that, Nature's Remedy, as Bob had indicated, and as I, the planning board had recommended, and we think is is in our best interest as well, uh, is that those spaces that are designated as Nature's Remedy spaces on the plan, on paper, will physically on the ground be designated and marked, uh, either spray painted or with signage, um, as Nature's Remedy's spaces, as their exclusive spaces, which will help in terms of the organization order. Uh, and, and address some of the parking issues that the that the um, uh, that, that the planning board had had mentioned previously. So Nature's Remedy, they and and um, you know Jushi soon, uh, they they clearly have an interest to make sure that their parking is um, is designated properly, that it's orderly, and um, and they're 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 meeting the uh, the requirement under the zoning bylaw. 
So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think that the board has to has to decide how you want those designated. Do you want them spray painted on the ground, or do you want signage? How how does the board want those? Uh, well, I'll, I'll I'll open it up to my fellow board members uh, first. I'm a signage probably going to be a little bit more permanent, um, but I'm I'll, I'm. I'm not sold on anything yet. Anyone from the board have any comments? Chris? Chris, you're muted. Sorry about Sorry, that. You. Can you hear me now? Yep. So um, there was also an additional document from the town administrator's office from the um, selectmen after they met. And I think we should read that into the record. They are concerned about the parking as well. That was in yeah, our original packet that, that got sent out on Tuesday. Not on the Tuesday? Additional. It got sent out on Tuesday and they're asking for a parking study. And if I can just go on while you're looking for that document, I was part of the original permitting on this. Um, the questions of the parking were uh, paramount from the beginning. Um, we questioned that. Um, everybody has questioned it. It's, it's come up consistently. I don't feel they have enough parking. Um, and I agree with the select board that they should, we should have an analysis of this. Um, that th those are my feelings. Thank you. Okay. Kathy, do you know what, am I missing a memo or am I, I shouldn't say I'm missing, did, did I personally miss a memo? Am I missing something in notes? Chris, are you referring to a, this past Tuesday or? August, so I have a letter here that from got August. sent out on Tuesday with our packets from Oh, okay. Mark You're talking Gaming about, Planning sorry. Board, John Oliveira, from Sky Administrator 310. Yeah, that was the August. Selectman. Was that August, August 10th. We received our packets on Tuesday, but the memo was dated August 10th, correct? Is that the one you're referring to? August 10th, yep. Okay. Has that been addressed? Yes. Yes, that was the original memo that actually that memo came out before the planning board met because right. it was addressed to both boards and um, and, it, and it has been addressed. Um, and you're right. If you remember, Chris, I'm, I'm going by memory here, so don't don't hold me to it too much here, but I'm pretty sure one of the issues we had and I do remember this, it was it was it was a concern initially when we, we permitted this was the fact that there was the potential for the dispensary and people coming in and out during the day and people weren't just parking there to go in for their shift. And I think the fact that they're not going to have a dispensary there um, and actually the employee count isn't going to change. They're just taking on more space uh, probably puts us in a much better position than, than we would have been uh, as, as originally permitted. But you are correct. There, there, there was some major concerns about that back when we initially permitted this. But those have, I, my understanding is those have been addressed at this point. The fire chief was was fine with the parking. His his concerns were more with the signage and to make sure he had accessibility uh, to the back side of the building. So back to Amy's question on what do we feel is the best way for them to, for, for the petitioner to designate the nature's remedies and uh, parking spaces? Is it paint? Is it signs? Jerry. So I have a quick question before I, I answer that. Um, on the site plan that Kathy issued uh, to us today, the 19 existing spaces that were striped in August 2021, that wasn't marked as nature's remedy. Can you just confirm that, that those are for nature's remedy? In the circle through the chair. Yeah, the circular. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes that is correct. Okay. Those, those 19, will, are, that's part of the 58. Okay, can you just... Can that site plan just be modified just to note that? Um, Bob, does it not note that those 19 are part of Nature's Remedy? It isn't. It just says it's striped. It just says that they're existing and they're striped in 2020, August 2021. So, oh. yes, we can modify that. Yes, good, good, um, good catch, Jerry. Uh, that's so we can we we will add that as a condition that the plan should be modified to designate and those, the particular areas part and, and the spaces in those in that circle were also part of nature's remedies uh, spaces previously as well. 
Thanks, thank Jerry. You. Thank you. Thank you. So if I, I'll add in my opinion on the um, signage versus the, um, I guess the, uh, um, the detailing of the asphalt, I prefer signage. So that's my preference. Through, through the chair, if I, if I may, yes, um, and ahead. there was, the, you're correct, the, the planning board did mention signage uh, or some type of designation by painting on the, on the ground. Um, I think there are pros and cons to both. One of the members of the planning board had indicated that they didn't want to see a sea of signs, a sea of signage out there. Uh, so that's maybe one of the negatives. Uh, so perhaps maybe if, if this board prefers to have actual signage um, or signs designated for each space, maybe perhaps the, there could be more of a limited number of signs that could still accomplish the same, uh, the same job with respect to designation of spaces without having a sign for every single space, because that, that would be a lot of signs out there. Understood, I mean, but to me, it's more enforceable if there's a sign rather than something on the ground, right? It's more visible. We'll, we'll it, but I'm open to it. pleasure, what, what, whatever board wants. I'm just pointing out what one of the other members had mentioned. We're, we're open to either, frankly. Well, it also will be our decision, I guess. That's why the planning board pushed it over to us. <laughs> Anyone else have any thoughts on sign versus uh, Chris? I kind of agree with Jerry. Um, the signs are more enforceable and more visible. Um, and it is an industrial area. So I don't, I don't see that the additional of uh, these three foot signs in front of each space is going to hurt. Um, plus in the winter time, if they are spray painted in a different color, they won't be visible. So, um, so I, I think I agree with Jerry. I, I prefer signs. Okay, Amy, we, I think we're leaning towards signs. Is there anything else you want to uh, make sure that we address? You're muted. Thanks. Um, there's nothing else. About being here. I never get to mute myself, so everyone can hear me whether they want to or not, I guess. Yeah. Um, I have nothing else. Your, uh, your, I was just gonna call you your honor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, your I have honor. nothing else. Oh, gosh, don't call me that. <laughs> I have enough enemies. Um, okay, so based on where we are at this point, uh, so Amy, let me, I mean, are we, I can run through the, um, I can run yeah. through the condition, the potential. Yeah, why conditions. don't we run through the conditions and then, I mean, are, are we just, are we issuing a new special permit or revi are we, we're issuing a new one, correct? So, um, so I, I, I was able to speak with attorney Smith yesterday. Um, there is, there's really no difference between a modified, a, mod a modification to a special permit or a new special permit. And the reason for that is because 40A section nine does not allow for modifications to special permits. Um, right. And so they, you know, they have to still go through the 40A section 11 notice requirements, public, you know, publicizing, a butter notices, the whole thing. Um, so, you know, because they have to, because they have to go through all of that, um, you know, I, I think that we issue them a modified um, special permit, but that the the start date on that modified special permit starts when it's issued. So therefore they have two years from when it's issued, when this permit is issued, not obviously not the prior permit. Um, okay. That doesn't necessarily mean much now because of COVID we've, you know, they've gained 400 and something days anyway. So, but, but that, that's my opinion on how these modifications should go. So, um, so what I will do is I will take the existing special permit, um, I will I will modify it with some with some of these new conditions and and the change. I'll, I'll outline the changes, and then we'll put in you know some new conditions. They they do still have to comply with all of the old conditions. Um, so so the new conditions right now are the um, the fire the fire lane. Uh, must be maintained to the satisfaction of the fire department. Trees must be trimmed and the gravel must be, I put drivable. I could probably think of a better word later. 
Um, the fire lane must be kept open and accessible at all times. Um, the parking spaces will be marked by signage that says um, juicy use only. Um, the emergency access doors will have to be clearly labeled. Um, tenant space on the building will have to be clearly marked. And that is all I have right now. We That's want it. the park. We want the parking. Did you say parking spaces have to have signs? Yes. Yep. Chris. So I think they um, they also wanted the alarms changed within the buildings, and I think that was just a verbal agreement. I'd like to see that part of the special permit as well, that the uh, the alarms and the beacons that he wanted on the outside, it all get so that it rings back and uh, comes back to the fire department, and they know what space is uh, is coming back. I think that's really important uh, for our first responders. Um, aspect um what i would probably suggest to that point chris would be that the fire alarm system be, uh, needs to meet uh the fire chief's approval is that does that cover what you're looking for absolutely to... mr chairman that sounds good um mr chair can i just on Go that ahead. point and it, it it's in the it's in the interest of of nature's remedy given that it's a multi-tenanted building that all of the fire alarm systems including not not limited to its own space, but the other occupants' spaces are up to code, and that they um, that they uh, report back or communi can communicate back uh, to the local uh, fire department. But Nature's Remedy can only do what it can do with respect to its own space. What the landlord and what the other tenants do with respect to their spaces, their systems, their utilities, their alarm systems is completely out of nature's remedies control and i'm not it doesn't seem fair or, or reasonable to me that that a, a condition like that which is really the landlord's ultimate responsibility um to enforce that would that that nature's remedies special permit could somehow be in jeopardy because of a bad actor in another unit i am completely 100 percent with you uh, with, and the fire chief with respect to his comment um, that, that the landlord and the other units, um, it, I don't think he was speaking to Nature's Remedy. I think Nature's Remedy is uh, doing everything correctly here. It's probably the other tenants and I just, I feel like that, that needs to be corrected by them. That's a fair I, point. I'd, I'd be That's fine with the, the condition being with respect to Nature's Remedy space uh, but with the other ones, I, I would prefer that everyone just work in good faith to talk to the landlord about the other tenants. And I'll tell you, as I said, the day after the planning board meeting happened, my, I know my client got on the got on the call with his employees. With um, and then the next day, the fire chief, representatives of the fire department came to the site. I think representatives of the health department came to the site. It was a good meeting, um, but we're we're on it with respect to nature's remedy the other tenants we just we have limited control over that no that's a fair point josh um i, I mean i can appreciate that they that the chief for for valid reasons wants to make sure that the systems are correct but um tying it to one tenant um could be could be problematic for that tenant you agree chris i i i Completely understand where the chief's coming from, but I'm not so sure how that would play out. I, I think Nature Dread Remedy could negotiate that part of their lease. Um, and please help me, Amy, on that one. Um, and are we stretching this, Council? So, um, I'm not really sure what the fire chief is looking for. Um, we, we might want to find out from him exactly what he's looking for because if it's something as simple as, you know, adding beacons on the top of the building or something like that, perhaps that might satisfy him. I'm not really sure what exactly is going to satisfy um, the fire department. I guess when, in my opinion, when it comes to um, public safety and, and the fire department, I usually recommend that we do whatever the fire department says. So, um, you know, and, and, and we are bringing in, you know, this is a industrial use. It's, you know, it's a, it's a grow facility. Um, I'm assuming that I'm, so I'm assuming that um, Northeast Alternatives next door has sufficient fire 
alarms. Um, so it's really just two tenants that I think would have to be, might have to be changed. I mean, I'm not sure. So I guess the question is, uh, and I, I agree with, with, with Josh, I was gonna say council, but we have two councils here. The, and that to hold nature's remedy accountable for what another tenant may do is, is, is potentially problematic for, for a lot of reasons. But um, if we were to tie be, because of their tenancy that the building as a whole and nature's remedy as a tenant needs to meet the fire chief's um, you know threshold. Um, you know, as as a tenant, we 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 can put certain conditions on a on a special permit that have to do with the building that the building that the the tenant or that the applicant does not actually own, uh, but the applicant needs to make sure that the landlord does that. I mean, is there a way for us to strictly tie sure. it to the building overall? So that way we're not dealing with, you know, Bob at Nature's remedy saying, listen, I can't get the, the other tenant to do anything. I really don't have any leverage over him. Whereas if it's the building owner who says we need to have, you know, because you're in there now, you need to have beacons on the building. But to, as your example would be, um, it's, it's a lot easier to say, listen, this is what fire chief wants. I'm your tenant. You need to do it type of deal because my special permit's conditioned on it or you don't have a tenant right so how about we say um you know um prior to the issuance of a building permit the applicant has to meet with the fire department to see if the applicant can do anything to um, satisfy the fire department's um, concern regarding alarms in the building so therefore if if nature's remedy can you know put something on their in on their roof that will help the other people then they can do that. So, so they just have to do whatever they can do to satisfy the fire department. They don't have to force other people to do things. Does that work, Josh? Um, as, as long as it's confined to nature's remedy and whatever good faith efforts nature's remedy would need to make with respect to satisfying the, uh, the fire chief and the fire department with respect to code compliance, then I think we're okay with that, um, but I, I will I will also say that although I mean th th this letter is uh, from the chief, I think it's um, I, I'm not sure that he necessarily or sh or that he necessarily intended that these become conditions in a zoning related special permit. Frankly, if there was some issue with respect to the fire alarm system or anything code related whether it's the building inspector or the fire chief, if there's some issue with the fire, sa uh, fire safety systems, life apparatus with respect, within uh, nature's remedy space, they don't need a special permit to go in there and say, I've got this special permit condition and I'm gonna enforce this issue that I'm having with your space. The fire chief can go do that tomorrow or the next day. It does not need to be in a special permit. In my mind, it only just, Sort of clouds and makes makes nature's remedy special permit ambiguous and puts a you know elevated risk as to misinterpretation. The fire chief, if there's a problem with the with the systems there, the fire chief doesn't need a, a zoning related per, a ZBA granted special permit in order to enforce something. They can he can enforce it tomorrow. Um, so I, it, but if if the board is really uh, interested in having something as a condition, uh, a life safety related condition in, in the special permit. I mean, oftentimes there is sort of a general uh, condition with respect to that the operator will uh, comply with all applicable laws and codes. Sure. Um, Josh, how about the operator complies with all applicable, all applicable um, laws and codes and will work in good faith effort with the fire chief to help get to their for their facility in the building in general that way it's not saying i mean that it, it's just they'll they'll work with themselves and the building owner to do what they can but it's not going to be tied to if they can't get another tenant to do something to your point i mean there's only so much they can do i'm i'm okay with that if that okay. if amy can <laughs> interpret that put that to paper i'm i think i understand your intent mr chair 
and I'd be okay with Chris, that. does that make sense to you? We're referencing it and we're yeah, addressing it. No, I, I agree with every, where everybody's going. And I, and I think if um, Nature's Remedy can clearly um, mark this this spot and have the beacon that he's asking for. And I think um, counsel is right for them that um, he can enforce um, the clearly marking of the building and the identification, you know, on his own. So as long as we have this in our special permit that he, he's meet, we're meeting his requests per his um, letter that we received this morning, dated August 13th, I, I think we're good. Thank you. Jerry. Just to uh, add in a couple other things that uh, to Amy's list, um, can we just put it in the count of parking spaces being at 68, yep. also with signage? Um, the other one, I know we mentioned this before, but no dispensary at the location. I, oh, thank, I forgot that. Thank you. Sure. Well, and just to modify that site plan, the latest one that's dated August 12th to reflect 19 spaces in the circular lot as designated for nature's remedy. If it was dated August 12th, why did we get it today? I don't know. Oh, so there was no changes from August Bob, 12th? Bob, is that the latest site plan? This is the one that the site plan that we delivered today as a, it's an August 12th date, but it has oh, a no, revision. Oh, no, it's got a revision of 819. Yeah, 819. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I'm sorry. You're right. I missed that. Okay. Any other? Just, I have one more quick question. If, if this is going to be a merger where uh, Jushi MA is the um, resulting entity, do these drawings of the special permit need to reflect that new name, Amy, or is this okay to go with Nature's Remedy? No, it's fine because we're putting in that we're approving the transfer. Okay, so that's good. the first thing that we're approving. If you guys, if you guys choose to do that. Thank you. That's all I had, Chairman. Thank you. I don't think we have any other questions from the board. Uh, Lake Kim, I probably should have asked this a little earlier, but do we have anyone on Facebook or anyone else out there who's looking to comment? Nothing on Facebook. Okay. So, Amy, do we do this in potentially two, two votes? One to approve the transfer, and then one to, oh, it's all one vote. Approve yeah, I don't think you need to, Mr. Chairman. Um, okay. I think you can do a motion to um, approve the transfer, um, the transfer of all permits, um, permits and co contracts and agreements from um, Nature's Remedy to Juice to Juicy. I, I'm not good at that. Sorry, um, and to approve. Uh, modifications to the special permit um, as discussed. Okay. And the only question I have on all the, uh, when you say modification to special permit, that includes the conditions, correct? Yes, that's what we're modifying. Yeah. Okay. Um, and should, and th those conditions need to be complied um, other than the ongoing ones, for example, the clearing of the, the road, what? whatnot, all of those conditions need to be met before the special, before um, the permit will actually be issued, correct? Correct, correct. Okay. Prior to, prior to, um, prior to building permit. Correct, okay. So hopefully someone was paying close attention to Amy because she just read the, um, read the motion. Would someone like to move the motion? How about I do it again and then someone can say so moved? Will that help? We, we can do that if you don't have faith that we have memory. I'm sorry, can I, uh, Mr. Chair? Go ahead, Josh. Um, just on that last point with respect to the, uh, I think you said that, that prior to issuance of the building permit, uh, that all of the conditions needed to be met. Um, the the fit out has is completed. Um, so it, they're ready to use and occupy that space. And as I had mentioned, they were, uh, they, they really would like to use that, utilize that space as soon as possible. 
uh, in particular, I'm just off the top of my head. I, I, let me, I think Josh, you... let me cut you off a second. Maybe, maybe let me rephrase. Prior to occupancy permit, how's that sound? And, and my point is, the only the only thing I think, based on what we talked about, um, that would not need to be met for the occupancy uh, permit would be the continual clearing and, and maintaining of the access road. What about the signs? I, I mean, they can't, it's going to take a little yeah. while to get those signs out there. Well, they can do a temporary occupancy permit. It shouldn't take that long for small signs to be made. I think it, uh, I, it, I, it, it may, it may today, Amy, I, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will interject that. Yeah. Unfortunately, everyone loves the term uh, supply chain uh, right now. Oh but yeah, you're right. I like Chris's, I like Chris's idea. Can we condition it that um, what's the final reason? Occupancy. Pending what, what, final the occupancy. Reason? Yeah, before pending final occupancy. Um, does that work better for you, Josh? Pending. So I'm sorry. How would it read, basically? Well, base. I'm going to defer to Amy, but basically, I think what we're looking to accomplish here is, listen. Other than the other than the signs and obviously the maintenance of the access road, because the signs may take a little while to get. You're going to get a temporary occupancy permit. That can be issued, uh, but you won't get your final until those signs are actually in the ground. Okay, so they can they can utilize the, the days to get the signs. You're still going to be able to occupy, but at some point, if it yeah. gets to a certain point, the building commissioner can come down and say, "Listen, there's no signs. It's been four months. What's going on here?" Okay, okay. That makes if that's everyone's understanding of how the a temporary occupancy would work, Amy, how it does work. So, um, so uh, generally, I mean, you, you can ask Chris, I generally don't like to um, tell building commissioners what to do uh, because they are, they're driven by the state building code. We're driven by the, by the state zoning code. Um, so are we going to actually say in our decision that a temporary occupancy permit may be issued without the signs or we just leave it up to Nate? How about we do this to take it off of Nate's plate? Do you feel, um, and I'm asking you, Josh, but it may be more Bob uh, Carr who needs to answer this. Do you feel that if we gave you three months to get those signs in, that's reasonable? Mr. Chair, Bob Carr here. Yes, I, that is reasonable. So what we could do, Amy, is tie it. You know where I'm going. I can do that. Yep, I can do that. If you want, we can forget the temporary, we're going to just issue yeah. with the, the signs need to be in 90 days from the occupancy. Yeah, yeah. That. that's a good, good solution. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, so um, I'm going back and I'm voting, uh, making a motion to approve um, the merger from Nature's Remedy to Juicy and to um, transfer the existing special permit. Um, and also modifying the existing special permit um, with regard to, I don't know if I want to go through everything, uh, with regard to the extra, with regard to an extra 10,000 square foot of square feet of space and a reconfiguration of parking as conditioned by the board. So moved. We have a second. Okay, Chris Carmichael made the motion. Jeff Youngquist seconded the motion. Any further discussion? Okay. Um, having said that, we got to do a roll call vote. So, um, Amy, we need what five people to vote on this? Correct. Yeah, you need four out of five. Four out of five. So, Chris Campbell, you're going to vote because Nora is not with us today. So. In no particular order, I'm just going the way you guys show up on the Brady Bunch screen here for me. Um, yay or nay? Chris Carmichael. Yay. Jeff Youngquist. Yay. Harry Noble. Yay. Chris Campo. Yay. And I am in favor as well. Motion carries unanimously. So, Amy, do you, Amy or, or Kathy, does somebody want to? interject what uh, next steps for the petitioner, or do we even need to? Um, Kathy has it down pat, I don't. Sorry, Kathy. We just need to get Kathy to unmute herself. <laughs> yeah, that takes the longest. 
Um, the ZBA will get the paperwork done within two weeks. It'll go to the town clerk where it'll stay for 20 days for the appeal period. There's no appeals, she'll sign it and we will send it out. And you take that to the Registry of Deeds in Plymouth to have that recorded. Excellent. Okay, um, Nature's Remedy or Jushi, thank you. I think you're all set. Thank you, everyone, uh, Mr. Chair, Thank you, Mr. Chair, Amy, Kathy, all the members. Uh, we really appreciate all of the cooperation and support um, and uh, continue to look forward to working through Jushi uh, at this establishment. Great. OK, good luck. Thank good you luck. very much. Thanks a lot. OK. We should be out of here relatively quickly at this point. Uh, next agenda item is to approve the meeting minutes for July 15th. Um, hoping some folks have had a chance to review those. And if so, someone would be so kind as to make a motion to approve or. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, Jerry made the motion. Do we have a second? Second it. Jeff seconded. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor. Chris Carmichael. Mr. Chairman, I wasn't at that meeting. I can't vote on that. Ah, uh, you can't. So you're recusing yourself. Excellent. Jerry. Yay. Jeff. Yay. Chris Campo. Yay. Chris Sheedy. And I am in favor as well. Motion passes unanimously. One recusal. Uh, I know I mentioned last time if anybody had any comments uh, regarding the signed bylaw update to pass those along to Kathy so her and I could put them all together and forward them off to the planning board. Not that I think the planning board is actually moving on that item right now, correct, Kathy? Uh, I guess they, they are working on it a little bit, but it's not been in a meeting yet. So. No, that's fine. I, I know they have plenty of other stuff on, on their plate. I just wanted to make sure there was no strict deadline, but we, we've kind of had no, this hang. So I will, again, remind anyone if they have any comments to pass them along. Uh, any new business? Okay. So our next meeting is going to be Thursday, September 16th. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So made. Was that you, Jeff, or Chris? Chris? I can Chris continue. Motion. Jeff, you seconded? Yes. Sure. Uh, okay. All in favor. Chris Carmichael. Yes. Jerry. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Chris Campo. Yes. Chris Sheedy. Yes. And I am in favor as well. We are adjourned at 8.08. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you in September. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, guys. It was nice seeing everyone.